Hi everybody. I want to begin with an apology for missing my end of January deadline. I'm really happy that I didn't miss it by much. I can't wait to show you this project. But first, please indulge me a few minutes of history as it is relevant to this project. I was a sophomore in high school, that's 10th grade when this magazine came out. My friends and I nearly wore out the library's issue. We were obsessed with building one of these Altair computers. I recently learned that around this time, Bill Gates and Paul Allen were working on what would become Microsoft's first successful product, Altair Basic. In the beginning, they didn't have an Altair to test on, so Paul wrote an 8080 emulator for the PDP-10, and this is what they used to test Bill's Altair Basic. This is the inspiration for my project. Through the years, I've gained experience with a variety of 8-bit microprocessors, and I've made a few attempts at this project, but I never got very far as a user interface that I would be happy with was beyond my grasp. That all changed when I purchased the Game Maker Studio Humble Bundle. This was a fortunate circumstance as I had been playing with Unity for a few weeks prior. Game Maker was the perfect choice for this project. So without further fanfare, this is my project, the Jur Emulator 8800. If you're not familiar with the Altair 8800, don't worry, I'll cover that in my next video. For those of you that are though, you may have noticed the switches are arranged hexadecimally instead of octally, that's groups of four instead of groups of three. I understand the reasons for octal, but I just prefer hexadecimal, so that's what I went with. The other thing you may notice is the icons at the bottom here. I intended for the processor emulation to be modular, so I think my next candidate would be a Z80. If I decide to tackle that, I could pull out the 8080, drop in a Z80, and um, take advantage of the Z80 instruction set. Uh, I have 64K RAM and uh, a 2K ROM. It's not really a ROM yet. I hope it will be at some point. I'll make a memory manager, but for now it just pre-populates the RAM with some test code I use for validating the uh, emulator function. I have 256 input and output memory locations that you can read or write to. And uh, to simulate the I.O., for example, the sense switches on the front panel uh, are at uh, I.O. location FF. And uh, this object can write to uh, memory location FF or 256 in decimal here. And then when the processor reads it, it's like it's reading the I.O. device. That's how I uh, emulate I.O. So that sh makes it expandable and uh, eventually I'll emulate uh, UART so I can get a terminal uh, emulation going and ultimately run perhaps a 4K basic on it and uh, I'm afraid it'd be really slow. That's uh, one, one place this suffers is in performance and I'll explain that in just a minute. But. Uh, I'm sure everybody came to see the blinky lights, so let's do the blinky light demo. We'll turn the power on, and uh, it comes up kind of random. We'll hit the reset switch, and the blinky light demo is at address 1F0, and so we'll toggle that onto the switches. We'll hit examine to place that <clears throat> excuse me, on the address bus, and uh, this is the first instruction of the flashy light demo. So I'll go ahead and uh, hit the run switch. And uh, as you can see, we have blinky lights. And uh, every once in a while, the input and output lights will come on. Uh, we have some stack operations going. Uh, this is the write uh, output control, the memory read control, and uh, the M1 is the instruction fetch status. So uh, I can hit stop, and one of the things I want to point out, and perhaps one of the reasons why um, the performance is what it is, uh, I decided to actually emulate down to the machine state all of the uh, activities of the processor. So uh, eventually I hope to get this debugger output uh, here that's coming from the game maker environment and uh, have it I don't display somehow on here uh, so you don't have to have the environment back here and you can actually see uh, what the instructions do as they execute um, 
looking at this example here, where did we start? Here's where we start. We're doing a fetch. Uh, it's exchanging the top of the stack with HL. Uh, we need to do a, a read uh, of the, from the stack pointer, and we're getting a 34 and putting that in the Z register and so on and so on. You can uh, actually see the instructions as, uh, as they're executed. Uh, inside the processor. So I thought that might be uh, an interesting part of the learning tool. It was certainly helpful to me while I was troubleshooting and um, it's uh, something that I uh, really want to do with this project is teach how these things worked and I learned I learned and re-remembered a lot about uh, how things worked on the on these old processors and uh, show how to do some simple assembly language programming and uh, just kind of see what kind of started the whole revolution. So that's my demo. I'll be making more of these videos in the following weeks, so please keep checking back. Uh, if you found this interesting, uh, please give the video a like and uh, subscribe to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.